welcome to the podcast on the heart conduction system. Now what you guys are looking at here is probably familiar, I hope. I hope that all of you are trained on automate, automated external defibrillators. They look like this right here. Um, you'll see them in quite a few places in our school, near the gym and cafeteria. Um, and basically they're there to reset your heart's electrical system so that it starts to beat again. Um, there are times when all of a sudden your heart stops beating or, st or, or isn't beating in the correct pattern. And so these are a quick way to send a burst of electricity to reset the entire system and hopefully get that heart beating in a regular rhythm once again. Now let's take a closer look at how all that's laid out. So if we're talking about electricity, we're talking about how the heart conducts it. And the heart actually has its own beat. It actually has its own electrical system that's not wired the same as our nervous system. You can see it all begins in these major clusters in your right atrium and then the one right between your right atrium and right ventricle. But then the main signal gets transferred down the ventricles and then it goes back up and back up. So let me give you some names for those, that pathway. That first major cluster for electricity all begins in the sinoatrial node at the top corner of the right atrium. This is the primary pacemaker that sends out that first initial signal to the rest of your heart. And then that signal is initially received at the next major cluster. That's called the atrioventricular node. And from there, the signal is really just a series of dominoes. It'll travel down the septum and into those fibers that's called the bundle of Hiss. And from there, it'll split into the right and left sides and go back up the ventricles. And then it'll finally branch off into these tiny, tiny fibers called Purkinje fibers all along the ventricle walls. And those just really ensure that the electrical impulse is carried throughout the ventricles and that everything is beating in unison as an in sync. Now, unfortunately, this isn't always the case. So there can be a lot of instances where your heart isn't beating quite in place. It has a cardiac dysrhythmia. And that dysrhythmia could be due to a lot of different things. It could be due to the the heart is just um, kind of shaking and and not really beating in a pattern. It could be fibrillating, so it's just shaking, shaking, shaking. Um, and so in that case, you want something really quickly like an AED. Uh, but if that happens pretty often, if your heart goes into fibrillation, either atrial fibrillation or ventricle fibrillation, you want to get an artificial pacemaker installed because your current one isn't working right. But you could also have just a really um, slow heartbeat called bradycardia where your heart is beating less than 60 beats per minute and the other extreme is called tachycardia where your heart is beating very quickly sometimes over a hundred beats per minute and so if that's the case if those are consistently happening in these individuals they'll get a small little implant that'll help the heart keep a beat and so it's placed um, on the the left side of your body, you can see it in this x-ray, and then in this drawing it looks a little like this. And so that pacemaker is inserted right under the skin, and it carries that electricity all the way to there, and you can see it kind of starts in the right atrium, just like in the natural pacemaker in the SA node. And so these pacemakers last several years, and eventually um, you do have to get those batteries replaced um, as they wear out, but it's just it is, it is what it is. It takes the place of your natural pacemaker or helps your natural pacemaker stay on a steady beat. So that's a look at your um, cardiac conduction system. Thanks.